Hi, my name's Alison and I'm the head teacher at Brougham Street Community Nursery School in Skipton. Today I'm going to give a short tutorial on how we make interactive communication boards for our pre-verbal children in our nursery school. They're used with the children on an iPad and we found that they're able to access this technology much quicker and easier than paper symbols. There still is a place for paper symbols but when we want to begin with communication and using something that's tailor-made for them, this certainly works well. They already know how to use the technology. They understand how pressing buttons work, so it's a great starter. In this example, we could ask Blake where they want to go. Blake wants to go to... We would present the iPad to them and they can choose where they want to go. Train station. Great! Today Blake wants to go to the train station and that's what we'll do. It's a really simple piece of technology. You can do it very quickly and you can personalise it to your key child or if you're a parent to your own child, you know your child the best. When we start off with making these communication boards, we always start off with something that we know the child really likes. There's no point starting off with something that they would not want to do Often it could, you see um, children being offered a nappy. Children generally, it's not their favourite thing. They would much rather be at the play park having a package of crisps, reading a story, making a jigsaw. Being offered the choice of having their nappy changed um, is not something that they maybe want to do. So why are they going to want to press that button? Always start off with what that child wants, what that child likes to do. It's about following their interests. We use Widget to create our symbols and we also upload photographs into Widget as well. Photographs are a really important first step because often children will not recognise the symbols so we will use a photograph of the item or the action at the beginning. We also like to include photos of our children because that is an identifier for them. They know who they are and they like to hear their name. Pressing the word and making it say their name is a great stimulus for communication. What we're looking at now is a PDF of symbols that I have put together for an interactive board for Blake, or actually a series of interactive boards for Blake. When I'm selecting a square, I'm going to use the snip tool all I need to do is press the shift button on my keyboard, the windows button on my keyboard and the letter S. Using the cursor I'm going to select the symbol that I want to use in my communication board. It will automatically copy it. I'm going to go to my PowerPoint. I'm going to select a nice blank slide and I'm going to press Control V and there is our first button on our communication board. I'm going to go back to my PDF and I'm going to do it the same thing again. Shift, window symbol, letter S. Using the cursor, I'm going to select the symbol I want to use in the board. It automatically copies it. I go back to my PowerPoint slide, Control V. There it is on the board. I want to make it as big as possible because this is the first board that this child has ever come across. We want to make sure that they can see what they're pressing and I'm going to have them far apart so there's no accidental pressing. We know that the child is making a clear choice. Now we're going to add the audio. We're going to go to insert. We're going to go to audio. And we're going to go to record audio. We're going to give it a name. Crisps and we're going to press the record button. Crisps. Press stop. We're going to check that it recorded OK. Crisps. Brilliant. Press OK and that will give us a speaker symbol. We're going to click on the speaker symbol, make it much larger. We're going to move it on to the button. We want the speaker symbol to be large because that's what the child will have to press to make the button make a noise but we don't want it to obscure the photograph. We're then going to take our cursor, holding down the left mouse button in my case, select both items, 
going to right click, group, group, we've made our first button. We're going to do the same thing for the second button. We're going to go to audio, record audio, give it a name, press record, fruit snack, press stop, check that it's recorded OK, fruit snack, brilliant, press OK. We've got our speaker symbol, we're going to make it larger, we're going to drag it over, put it in the place we want it to be. We can still see the image clearly. Using the mouse, we're going to drag across both, sim both items, right click, group and group, and that's our second button. In presentation mode, we would show this to the child and they will see a picture of crisps and they'll see a picture of the rolled fruit snack and they will use their finger to point to the thing that they want. And because the speaker symbol is so loud, the button will speak. Crisps. Crisps. The child will hear the word crisps and you as the teacher will also then say crisps. The more you hear a word, the more likely you are then going to use it. So we would always give the child the thing that they've asked for, crisps. You can make the board slightly more complicated by adding a picture of the child and you as the teacher, or maybe they, if they are able to do so, will, will make it play. Blake wants Blake wants, what, what, what do they want? Monsters love underpants. Monsters love underpants, why not? It's a brilliant story. And it's as simple as that. You could have a whole series of communication boards for the different children that you have in your class. And you can also make them for parents at home or for anybody that's going to be working with that child. Perhaps you want to introduce a visual timetable you could have one that plays the different things that are going to happen during the day. Perhaps you're going to go on a walk together and you could have a visual walk of the different things that you might see on the way. It makes it an experience where you are communicating together and because it's using a technology that they're already familiar with, you're already over that first hurdle. So it's brilliant. And because you can include photographs of the child, you can include photographs of their family, their friends, you can really make it something that they want to use and want to communicate with. And best of all, it's so easy and you can save it and share it with others. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you've got any questions, please just send us a message at admin at bromstreet.n-yorks.sch.uk.